ancient evil has arisen from the shadows. Sauron gathers power. His malice inflames those who follow him. To the north, he sends Agendauer, cruel master of dark sorceries, to crush all who would dare oppose him. Against this rising shadow, Stand those who do not seek glory, who do not seek power. Those who fight to stem the onslaught. To protect their people, their lands, and all of Middle-earth. Three bright flames of courage to challenge the darkness. Of the great war of the ring, many songs have been sung and many tales told. The names of heroes like Gandalf the Grey, Aragorn the King, and Frodo the Ringbearer are greatly revered, and rightly so. Yet Sauron's grasp stretched much further than the lands of Gondor and Rohan alone, and his forces might have done great evil in the north of Middle-earth had a handful of heroes not stood in his path. Their stories, too, deserve to be told. Pay heed now to one such tale, which begins here in the town of Bree, just a few short days before Frodo arrived on his quest. Aragorn. Eladon. Well met. And in company with Andriel of Rivendell and Farin of Erebor. An unlikely trio to find walking through the doors of the Prancing Pony. You were at Sarn Ford last I knew. Do you bear news from Harbalad? Yes. Grim news. I feared it would be so. Quickly, tell me what has happened, but keep your voices low. There are unfriendly ears, even here in Bree. Three days passed. The guard at Sarn Ford was attacked by nine black riders. We were overwhelmed, and the enemy passed into the Shire. This is worse than I imagined. I know these riders. It is from Mordor they come. Our folk could not hope to stand against the Nine together. How bad were our losses? Very bad. We tried to resist them, but they were surrounded by an aura of unnatural dread. There is more you should know. After the rout, one of the Black Riders met with an ally, a man of great malice and power. stirred up the orcs of the mountains. Even now, I have a force gathering amid the ruins of old Fornost. Return at once and prepare your forces. We will have need of them soon. My orcs will be ready. These lands have known peace for too long. They will soon feel the Dark Lord's wrath. Agendauer has a force at Fornost, then our position grows all the more desperate. 
But why all this force against the peaceful halflings? It can't be the enemy sees them as a threat. I will say this much. There is a hobbit of the Shire who should be coming this way with a great burden. If it falls into the hands of the enemy, it will mean doom for us all. Now this hobbit is adrift on the road with enemies all around. I must find him before they do. And I need you to help me keep him safe. You are my chieftain. I will gladly do whatever you command. I... I'm a part of this now as well. Then we three are of one mind. How can we aid you? We must reduce the threat from the enemies gathered at Forlost. Travel there and do whatever you can to keep the enemy's eye turned towards you and away from the Shire. Perhaps we will have help in this task. Eladan and Elro here were in the north when last I heard. Any gathering of the enemy is certain to attract their attention. Good. You could find no better allies than the sons of Elrond half-elven. I hope we meet. But with or without help, the enemy will be kept busy. We'll make sure of that. I have a few questions, if I may, Aragorn. Shh. Here in Bree, there is no Aragorn. Only Strider the Ranger. Yes, Strider it is. But what will you do now? I will continue the search for the Hobbit I spoke of. I've already scoured the road between here and the Shire, but found no trace of him. I fear he may have left the road, perhaps to escape pursuit. My hope now is that he will make his way here to Bree, the only safe haven for many miles. But if he does not appear soon, I will take to the road again in search of him. Should the enemy at Fornos join in the hunt, well, you understand just how grim our chances will become. I need you to prevent that. Go to Fornost. Take the fight to them. What of this man, Agendower, who met with the Black Riders? What do you make of him? Some servant of the Dark Lord, and by his name, one to be feared. His presence in the North bodes ill for us all, but I'm glad you discovered it. At least now we are forewarned. ...that attacked us at Sound Ford. Those Black Riders. I've never seen anything like them before. What are they? Do you not know them? There are whispered tales and legends enough that tell of them. They are the Nine, the Ring Wraiths. Of all the servants of the enemy, they are the most feared. This Agendower, he was no Wraith. He seemed like a man, one filled with malice and dark power, but a man nonetheless. But what kind of man would serve the Dark Lord? Not all the Dark Lord's servants are Wraiths and Orcs. There have been and still are many men, warriors and kings that walk alive under the sun and yet are under his sway, willing or unwilling. You tell me of Fornost. Fornost was once a great city, the capital of the Dúnedain kingdom of Arnor. It fell to the Witch King long ago. The men of Gondor and the Elves formed an alliance that drove the Witch King out, but Fornost was never rebuilt. The ruins remain a place of dread for many. The men of Bree call it Dead Man's Dyke and fear to go near. It is a perfect place for our enemies to gather in secret. So, Agendauer chose well, it seems. We'll travel to Fornost and see what we can do to upset his plans. Hello, Master. A ranger by your looks, I'd say. Well, all are welcome here, long as they mean no harm. Some of the locals may not take to your kind, but don't let that bother you none. Folks around here are suspicious of those that don't know. <laughs> what can I do for you, then? I may have need of a few things before I leave town. Where should I look? Well, we have stores and shops here in town, but I suspect most of them wouldn't suit your needs. Hmm. You might try Adelgar Oldbank's shop. He's got a collection of unusual items which might interest you. It's right across the street from here, uh, on the corner. If it's repairs you need, try Elman Brushwood, our blacksmith. His smithy is just across the street, but there on the corner. This is foremost. Yet I see no sign of the enemy. These ruins could hide a large army. We might even now be under the gaze of unfriendly eyes. <laughs>
I thank you, friends. Without your timely arrival, my death would have been slow, but certain. You can speak. Why, of course. The great eagles of the north speak as well as any man. I am called Bellaram. My home is in the Misty Mountains, and I serve Gwaihir, Lord of Eagles. Who is it I have to thank for my rescue? I am Eridan, one of the Dunedain of the North, and my companions are Andriel and Farin. Then I am indebted to you, Eridan of the Dunedain, and to your friends. What brought you here to Fornost? I often range far across the lands of the North, gathering news for Gwaihir, my lord. When I saw activity here in long-abandoned Fornost, I grew curious and flew lower to investigate. What did you see? Goblins and other foul folk are working within the ruins. They appear to be preparing for war, building siege engines and stockpiling arms. Did you see any sign of the one who leads this force? I saw a tall man, heavily armored. The goblins obeyed his commands. Who he is, I cannot say, but he had an aura of menace, like one tainted by the shadow. Agandar, it must be. You know this man? He is a servant of the Dark Lord. We must find him and destroy him if we are able. I will assist you, but it will be perilous. The enemy has positioned war machines upon the inner wall. They limit my ability to fly freely. If we could reach the top of the wall, we might be able to destroy the machines. Beyond those doors, you will find a passage and stairs leading up to the wall. The machines are certain to be heavily guarded. We have little chance of surprising the goblins with but one way to approach. I will take to the air and draw their fire. If we are fortunate, that will allow you to gain the top of the wall unobserved. We cannot let you make a target of yourself. I am better prepared now. They will not find it so easy to bring me down a second time. Very well. Let's go. The wall is clear. Well done. I am free to fly unhindered. But there are others fighting in the city. They may need our help. Could it be Elrond's sons? I cannot say, but they move with stealth, and they leave a trail of slain enemies in their wake. That sounds like Eladan and Elro here on both accounts. They are likely heading for the Citadel, just as we are. Then let's push on. Maybe we'll meet up with them. I will shadow your movements from above. In open ground, I can strike against our foes. Call on me when the need is great. Troll in combat. That is no small feat, friends. It would appear that we are on the same side. Perhaps we could be of assistance to each other. Allow us to offer a hand. Andriel, is that you? Well met, my friends. We were told we might find you here. I am truly glad to see you. Allow me to introduce my companions, Eridan of the Dunedain and Farin of Erebor. I present to you Eladan and Elrohir, the sons of Elrond Half-Elven. It is a pleasure to make the acquaintance of such skilled and courageous warriors. Was it the three of you then who freed the Great Eagle? Yes, Belaram is his name. That was well done, but what brings you to Fornost? I am here by Aragorn's command. Farron and Andriel have volunteered to aid me. But why would Aragorn send you to Fornost? As he learned of the goblin force... This is far more than a simple gathering of goblins. We were with the rangers at Sarnford when we were attacked by black riders out of Mordor. That is grim news. But it does not explain why Aragorn would send you here. The black riders are in league with a man called Agandaur. It is he who commands this force. 
I begin to understand. Aragorn wishes you to distract Agandauer. But now that we have joined forces, we can do more than distract him. Let us cut the head from this serpent of Sauron. Agreed. But first, we must find him. He is certain to be in the citadel at the heart of the city. We must attempt to make our way there. No easy task amid these crumbling ruins, and a host of orcs and goblins will seek to bar our way. If we are separated, press on toward the citadel. There we will regroup for our final attack. Be on your guard. Agandauer wields dark powers. I only hope our combined strength will be enough to overcome him. Dower must be within, then that is where we must go. The way is barred by a powerful magic ward. Can you break the spell? Perhaps, but it will take time and concentration. You'd best get started. We'll guard you while you work. We must separate for a time, my friends, for I cannot follow you with Will you depart for your home, Belleron? No, lady. It would be faithless of me to say farewell while friends' lives yet hang in the balance. I will await your return. It may be that I can prevent reinforcements from following you into the tower. We'd best hurry. The elves are getting ahead of us. May fortune favor you all. out there invaders how many not many but they freed the eagle fools now our presence here will be revealed is this the best your rabble can do they must be great warriors bloody handed elves or some of those filthy types. i don't care find them and kill them call out your guards don't let them escape Call my guard and be quick about it! Nothing. 
You haven't won anything here. It is no use. He has escaped us for now. Yes, but you cannot be blamed. It was bold of you to go after him alone. Indeed, though, perhaps it was not the wisest course. Summoned a storm! How can a man wield such power? Sauron is a master of dark sorcery. He has taught these arts to mortals before. It may be that Agandar learned at the hand of the Dark Lord himself. It is not Agandaur alone. We battled orcs in the ruins below that cast spells against us. I have fought many orcs in my time, but never any that use sorcery. Until now. This could mean Agandaur has passed his knowledge on to others. Even to the orcs. That would be a great evil, even for one such as he. What was that beast he made his escape on? I cannot say. I have never seen or heard of its like before today. Nor have I. Perhaps the Dark Lord has bred these creatures as a challenge to my folk. I can only wonder how many of these beasts he has placed at Agandar's command. Oh. If only we could have finished that snake here and now! I have a feeling he won't stay quiet for long. But what now? Where do we go from here? For my part, I would gladly join in the hunt for Agandar. Yet, I have my duty to consider. I must return home to inform Lord Gwaihir of all I've learned here. Who is Gwaihir? He is the Lord of the Eagles of the Misty Mountains. I am surprised you do not know the name, for he was a friend to your kinsman, Thorin Oakenshield, and to your own lord, Dane Ironfoot. Oh, hi. The King of the Eagles is indeed a revered friend of my people. As his vassal, I am duty-bound to return to him. He must be informed of everything I have learned here. Aye. Your duty to your people must come first. I'm glad we met, Brother Rob. I hope we'll meet again one day. As do I, Farron of Erebor. You and your comrades saved my life. That is something I will not forget. If I can ever be of service to you, I will. Farewell wherever you fare, Belaram. Till your Aerie receives you at your journey's end. My thanks! Commend me to Elrond, your father, and farewell. for us. I believe we also have a duty to inform our allies of all we have learned. Then we three should return to the ranger camp at Sanford. Halvorod will be anxious for any news we can bring. Agreed. For I, at least, am still under Halvorod's command. Should you find Halvorod has no pressing need of your services, I would urge you to make your way to Imladris. We may have need of your strength and resourcefulness before long. I do not know this place. Imladris. Ah, your pardon. You know it better as Rivendell. There are still some goblin skulls down below in need of cracking. Shouldn't we deal with them? Goblins are only a threat when they have a strong leader to drive them on. With their chieftain slain and Agandar fled, those few who remain in Fornost will soon fall to squabbling among themselves. And we may find more important tasks awaiting us elsewhere. But what about Aragorn and the Hobbit he was looking for? He's probably got his hands full with the Black Riders and all. Shouldn't we try to help them? If Aragorn has found this Hobbit, it is certain they will both be bound for Imladris. He is several days ahead of us now. We shall look for him as we go, but Aragorn is resourceful. I suspect he will arrive at Imladris before we do. Then we'd best head back to Sarnford. Farewell for now.
have received word through the sons of Elrond and the wandering companies telling of your valor at Fornost. You are to be commended for your skill and daring. I think we managed to keep the enemy brushed back a bit. But how have things been here since we left to find Aragorn? All has been quiet. There was an alarm sounded at Buckland shortly after we parted company, but it seems to have amounted to nothing. We return to offer you what help we may. How can we best be of service? Truthfully, I would be happy for the extra hands. But it is clear to me that you three have a greater destiny. You may be needed more urgently elsewhere. Then what would you have us do? I advise you to make your way to Rivendell. Aragorn will be eager to hear news of Agendower, and he may have other tasks for you to perform. For now, the enemy seems to have turned away from the Shire. Elrond's sons suggested much the same thing. All right then, I guess we're bound for Rivendell. Perhaps there is something you can do for me on your way. You have but to name it. I sent two of my rangers, Kalarin and Lewin, on patrol along the Brandywine River. They should have returned long before now. I am growing concerned for them. They are both seasoned rangers who have served many years in this region. We can be certain they have not simply lost their way. From which direction would they be returning? They were to follow the Brandywine north as far as the Great East Road. And from there to make their way back by passing through the Barrow Downs. The Downs are just north of our position here. Then we'll make our way north by way of the Barrow Downs. Perhaps we will discover some trace of them as we travel. You have my thanks. Eridan has great skill as a tracker. If Lewin and Kalaran made it as far as the Downs, he will likely pick up their trail. Farewell and safe travels to you all. You're soon to be off again, are you? Well, I have a few things among our supplies that may help you on your way. Perhaps a few extra arrows for your quiver, and a few of Solana's healing drafts may come in very handy as well. Take a look. It was a grim day when those Black Riders attacked. What do you make of it all? Ah, well, I've seen many things in my day, evil in many forms. But I've never seen anything like we faced that day. So many lost. It's hard for an old man to see so many younger men slain. I wish I could. Well, there's nothing to be gained. Are you hurt? You look well enough to me. If it's healing drafts you need, you can get them from Maradon. I have a dying man on my hands. Oh, he looks terrible. What's wrong with him? Wrong? I don't really know. His wound is minor, yet his life is slipping away. I fear he is suffering from the Black Breath. The Black Breath? What is that? It is some power wielded by the Black Riders, the Nine Nazgul. Their victims are stricken senseless, and without aid, they soon die. I've already lost three men to this curse. Eleron is the only victim who yet lives. Is there nothing we can do? <sighs> I hardly know. Drawing an arrow, stitching a wound. These things I have done countless times. The Black Breath is something I know only from the old rhymes my teacher taught me. An old rhyme? Well, let's hear it then. It was years ago. Let me think. I believe it ran something like this. When the black breath blows, and death's shadow grows, and all lights pass, come a Thalus, come a Thalus, life to the dying. That's all I can recall. Hmm. What's this a Thalus the rhyme speaks of? An herb, commonly known as King's Foil. It has little medicinal use, though some find it comforting for headaches and other small complaints. Seems worth a try. Have you no Athalus? No, I have none. You'll have to forgive me for neglecting to lay up a supply. But you see, no one bothered to tell me that the Nine Ring Raids would rise up from ancient legends to trouble us here. If I had Athalus, don't you think I would have used it by now? Athalus has to grow somewhere. Any chance I could find some before it's too late? Perhaps you could find some at that. 
The plant is not native to Middle Earth. It was brought to these shores from lost Numenor and planted in the lands where our ancestors used to dwell, including the Borodans to the north. How will I know a Thalus should I come across it? The plant has many long, smooth leaves, but you might best find it by its scent, a sweet, pungent fragrance. The Borodans hold precious few such plants. My road leads to the Barrow Downs. If I find a Thalus growing there, I'll bring some back to you. Lewin, he lives. Can you hear me, Lewin? Awake. No strength can prevail against this sickness. What good are swords in the face of this plague? What, what, what in the name of... Eridan? Yes, it's me, my friend. I... have been dreaming. As you awoke, you said something about a plague. What did you mean? I... I don't know. It was as if I was someone else. I remember a... plague... and despair. The Great Plague. Nearly 300 years ago, it devastated the Dunedain of this region. You were sharing the dreams of those for whom this tomb was made. Well, let those dreams remain with the dead. I want no more of them. How did you end up in this borrow? I recall we were making good speed through the Downs, eager to return to our friends. But a fog began to rise and it became hard to find our way. We began to hear voices calling to us, as if from far off, us underground. And then, the dead were all around us. We, we fought them, but then I felt the presence of something else, something stronger, more evil. I saw a shadowy figure seize hold of Kalaran and he fell senseless. It came for me. That is all I remember. But if I was brought living into this tomb, then the same would be true for Kalaran. We need to find him. That's what we intend to do. Are you strong enough to join us? Yes. I think I can keep up with you. Let's go before any more dead things decide to turn up. It's a hard thing to see a good friend slain. Harder still to see his remains desecrated in this manner. But at least now he is at rest. And you, how are you bearing up? First black riders, now barrow whites. This is more than men should have to contend with. <sighs> but where there is life, there is hope. Thanks for your concern, but I will be all right. I owe it to those who have fallen to go on as best I may. We've gathered many rich treasures from this tomb. You certainly deserve a share. Thanks, but it would only serve to remind me of all of this. You keep what you have won. You've been through a terrible ordeal. Perhaps you should come with us to Rivendell. Or we could take you to Bree. It's not far away. No, I, I feel my strength returning. I'll soon be myself again. And then I will bear Kalaran's body away from these tainted tombs. He should be better. That would be fitting. I hope that he will rest. Farewell, Lewin. Eredan, it is good to see you safe. Eladan and Elro here told us of your actions at Fornost. Such courage and skill brings honor to all the Dunedain. Indeed. It is an honor to welcome one so brave to my home, and your companions as well. I am grateful for what you did at Fornost. If Agandar's forces had joined in the hunt, there is little chance that I and my charges would have made it here to safety. I thank you for the welcome. Are you the master of these halls? Yes, I am Elrond Half-Elven, Lord of the Refuge of Imladris, or as you know it, Rivendell. Half-Elven? What does that signify? Both my sire, Earendil, and my mother, Elwing, had fathers who were of the Edai, the most noble of the men of old. They and their descendants are called the Perenthil, which means the Half-Elven. Are you then of mortal kind, like other men? 
To each of the Parathil is given a choice, whether to become mortal or to accept the life of the Eldar, the Elves. Long ago, I chose to be counted among Elvenkind. My own children will face this choice as well. I'm glad to see you made it here in one piece, Aragorn. But I still have no idea why your mission was so urgent. I think it is time we told our newfound friends what they have gotten themselves into. I admit, I am eager to know. I cannot imagine why the enemy would send a Nazgul into the Shire. You have more than earned such an explanation. Tell me, what do you know of Isildur's Bane? Isildur's Bane? That is another name for the Ring of Power. Quite right. The Ring of Power. The One Ring. The Ruling Ring. After lying lost and nearly forgotten for centuries, Sauron's Ring has once again been found. Do you mean to say the happening Aragorn rescued has come into possession of the Dark Lord's Ring? I see now how close we came to complete ruin. But what will become of the Ring? Now that it is safe in Rivendell. There is no safe resting place for the ring. Not even here in Imladris. It is a danger to all who come near to it. There is only one course left to us. The ring must be destroyed. To do so, the ring will need to be cast into the same fires from which it was forged. Those of Mount Doom. In the land of Mordor. The Hobbit, Frodo Baggins has agreed to take it there. You're not going to send a hobbit off to Mordor alone? No, certainly not. A fellowship will be formed. A fellowship of nine. Nine walkers set against Sauron's nine black riders. Among this fellowship will be representatives of all the free peoples of the world. Elves, dwarves, and men. Edegorn and I will both be going. What can the rest of us do to assist you? The Nazgul and Agandaur are dire threats. We must learn all we can of their movements before the Fellowship is to depart. Scouts will be sent out in every direction to scour the lands around Rivendell. Your aid in this would be of great service to our cause. Very well. Where should we start? Agandaur is our chief concern. Although the Nazgul are powerful foes, a mission here in the north is abundantly clear. We can only guess what Agandara may be planning, or where he went after he escaped from you. I suspect he may be planning to move against us here. Sauron... very rugged terrain, home to many trolls and giants. I myself was in the Etten Wars but days ago. I saw no sign of Agandaur's presence. But neither did I encounter trolls. That fact alone is troubling. It could be that they are gathering in force somewhere among the moors. If so, it is best we learn of it before they can take us by surprise. We will scout the Etten Wars to see what we can discover. From what I have heard of you, from Aragorn and Elrond's sons. I expected no less. Still, you have had a long road and hard fighting to get this far. Take what time you need to rest and recover before you set out. The Aten Moors are a dangerous place for the unprepared. The hospitality of my house is yours for as long as you wish. Welcome, Aradan. I suspected you would find your way here before long. What task are you working at now? My fellow smiths and I are preparing for a great work. Soon we will be called upon to reforge the legendary sword Narsil. In the meantime, I have been sharpening my skills by practicing the art of imbuing gemstones. But Narsil? Narsil was the sword of Elendil, a mighty lord of the Dúnedain who defied the Dark Lord in the War of the Lost Alliance. He bore the sword in battle against Sauron, but he was slain and the sword was broken. Since that time, the shards of the sword have been an heirloom of the House of Elendil. 
It was to remain broken until the day when an heir of Elendil would go to war to reclaim the crown and title of king. That day will come soon, and the sword must be made whole once again. What do you mean by imbued? Simply that certain objects have inherent virtues, and a skilled artisan can, through his craft, increase those virtues and bind them to an object for advantage. Gemstones are very strong vessels for this process. Sadly, appropriate gemstones have become difficult to find. The growing trouble throughout the land keeps travelers away, and our own people are staying closer to home. Perhaps I can help you with that. I will be traveling soon. I would be pleased to have your help. I will provide you with a list of the types of gemstones that are of the greatest value to me. If you collect the stones, I am certain I could create something that you would find useful. But to be of use, the gemstones must be of the highest quality. Fortunately, we have as a guest a dwarf of the Lonely Mountain. Glowin is his name, and he is skilled in the appraisal of gems of all sorts. Once you have gathered the stones, allow him to examine them. He'll know if they are suitable. Pardon my curiosity, but you don't appear to be one of Elrond's people. No. I am one of the woodland folk of Mirkwood. My name is Legolas Greenleaf, the son of Thranduil, king of the Woodland Realm. But I too am curious. You don't appear to be one of the men of Dale, nor one of the Bjornings. I am Eridan, one of the rangers of the north, the Dunedain. Ah, one of those who follow Aragorn, son of Arathorn. Tell me about Mirkwood. Mirkwood is the greatest woodland in all of Middle-earth. It was called Greenwood the Great, before the shadow of Sauron fell over it. In ages past, it was a place of great beauty. But now, it is filled with darkness and dread, save only in the north where my father's realm is maintained. What brought you on such a long and perilous journey? Unpleasant business. My father sent me to report the escape of Gollum, a creature Aragorn had entrusted to our care. What can you tell me about this Gollum? A pathetic creature who long held the Ring of Power. The evil of the Ring has left him twisted and tormented. His only thought is to recover what was taken from him. How did Gollum manage to escape your guard? Not from a lack of watchfulness, but perhaps from too much kindness. We occasionally allowed Gollum to go about the wood under close guard. But on one of these ventures, the guards were attacked by orcs from Dol Guldur. In the confusion, Gollum escaped. We followed his track southward for many leagues, until it drew near to Dol Guldur. There, it became too dangerous to pursue him any further. What is this place, Dol Guldur? A stronghold of the enemy in the south of Mirkwood. It was once the dwelling of the Dark Lord, until he was driven out in the year of the Dragon's Fall. But it has once again become a place of great evil. All the darkness that besets Mirkwood has its source in Dol Guldur. Will you be departing for your home soon? No. I have been chosen to represent Elven Kind among the Company of the Ring. I will be accompanying the halfling, Frodo Baggins, on his journey south. It seems strange that with so many elves in his own household to consider, Elrond chose to make you a member of the Fellowship. I asked for the privilege, and Elrond did not refuse me. I feel he may have been relieved not to lose any of his household to this quest. He will have need of all his strength, should the enemy move against him Lardris. I am curious why you would volunteer for this. Partially to make amends for the loss of Gollum, but more so because this will be the final chapter in our long struggle against the darkness. And I wish to have a hand in our final victory. Or at least, to stand in the forefront of our last act of defiance. May fortune favor your fellowship in the days ahead, Legolas. Magavanen, well met and welcome to the safe haven of Imladris. Magavanen, Lady Arwen, it is a great honor. The Dunedain are always welcome here. You have endured great danger and given us urgent warning of a new threat to the North. For this, we honor you, Eridan. It is my duty as a ranger, nothing more. I am glad to be of service to my Lord Aragorn. You show the modesty worthy of a hero. Estelle and my brothers have spoken highly of your courage at Fornost, and I thank you for your part in seeing to my brother's safe return. 
Please, take your ease and rest a while in our halls. You will find all your heart could desire, whether it be food, drink, song, or storytelling. Estelle? The name means hope. But who is this Estelle you spoke of? Forgive me. I forget that not all the Dunedai know of this. Estelle was the name given to your chieftain, Aragorn, as he grew up in Inmadras. It is a good name. How did he come to be known as Estelle? As a ranger, you must know of the practice of bringing the child of a chieftain to Inmadras to be fostered. But you may not know how great the danger was at the time. Aragorn was but two years of age when his mother, Gilrain, brought him here after his father was slain by an orc arrow, Isildur. Elrond became like a father to him. Knowing the enemy sought ever for a living heir of Isildur, he renamed the boy Estelle to keep his true name and lineage hidden. Aragorn was twenty before Elrond revealed these things to him and gave him tokens of his heritage. Would that I had the leisure to enjoy the peace of Imladris. But Elrond has asked me to scout the Ettenmores. My companions and I must leave as soon as may be. Then I will not keep you, but we may be of service to one another. I am helping my father brew a potion known as Miravor. One sip of Miravor can renew heart and soul and bring new vigor to weary limbs. I am in short supply of certain rare ingredients that may be found in the Ettenmores. If I gave you a list of the ingredients, perhaps you could bring any you find while carrying out your mission. With enough ingredients, I will return the favor by brewing an extra flask that you may have for your own use. Gladly, Lady Arwen. That is a generous offer. Should I find what you require, I will return to you once my mission is complete. Let me see what you have found. Yes, this is indeed a Thalus. Now, according to the old law, all I need to do is add these leaves to boiling water. Let Elrond breathe in these fumes. Where's my reward? And Eridan as well. How can this be? I thought you were all slain. But no. That was only the dark voices in my dreams. Yet, it was not... All a dream, was it? I'm afraid not. But don't concern yourself with that now. You are safe. Salana has saved you. Mine was the knowledge that Eridan found the herb that saved you, at great risk to his life. Then I owe you my life, friend. Please, let me show my appreciation. My weapons were made in lost Numenor in the distant past. They've been in my family for generations. I want you and your friends to have them now. What do you know of Numenor? Numenor was the land of my ancestors, a great civilization, but it sank beneath the sea thousands of years ago. Only a handful of survivors led by Elendil escaped here to Middle-earth. And who was this Elendil? A mighty lord of Numenor. It was he who founded the realms of Arnor and Gondor long ago. Our chieftain Aragorn is his heir. Enough, lad. Now is not the time for history lessons. You must rest. Yes, I am tired. But you, my friend, will you accept my gifts? I thank you, Elrond. But your forefathers passed these down to you. And someday you should pass them to a son of your own. I would have no chance for children had you not saved my life. Please, I insist you take these. 
You can always return them to me later, when this is all over. A noble gift? Thank you. Rest now, and recover your strength. Farewell to you both. Welcome, Dunedain. Welcome to Imladris. Are you in need of anything to help you in your travels? I have many things in my keeping that might serve you well. The welcoming words, but I do not believe I've had the pleasure. No, indeed. I am Alare, one of Master Elrond's stewards. I help to manage the needs of his household, including arms and armor. I suspect you might have need of such things. Hello. You are Aradan, aren't you? I was hoping I would get a chance to speak with you. And you are Frodo Baggins. Aragorn and Gandalf have told me about you. And your burden. Likewise, they have told me all about you. I wanted to thank you and your friends for all you did to keep us safe on our journey to Rivendell. Will you tell me about your journey? We had trouble almost from the start. The Black Riders were always just behind us. And we nearly met disaster in the Burrow. You entered the Burrow Downs? If you escaped from there, you are made of sterner stuff than I'd imagined. That is no place to go wandering. You seem to know a great deal about the Burrow Downs already. I'd prefer not to speak about what we found there. It is too horrible to dwell on. Even here in the safety of Rivendell. What befell you in Bree? We must have just missed crossing paths there. There were spies in Bree, and our room was attacked in the night. If Strider hadn't convinced us to sleep elsewhere, our journey would have ended then and there. I am familiar with the ruin known as Weathertop. What happened there? We were attacked by five of the Black Riders. I... I was foolish, and I put on the ring. One of them wounded me before Aragorn managed to drive them away. The knife that was used against me left a shard in the wound. From what Gandalf has told me, the fragment was working its way inward. If, if it had reached my heart, I would have become a wraith under the power of the Black Riders. Fortunately, we were able to reach Rivendell in time for Elrond's healing arts to save me. It is a little thing, this ring, but filled with mischief. Will you show it to me? No, I... I mean, I'm sorry, but Gandalf and Elrond have warned me against revealing the ring to anyone. Even proven friends. I hope you understand. Yes, I believe I do begin to understand. It was wrong of me to ask. Forgive me. There is nothing to forgive. But the ring... It has a strange effect on everyone around it. It is indeed a heavy burden you bear, Frodo. May you find strength and wisdom on the long road ahead. Farewell. Well, my friend. It's an honor to make the acquaintance of one of Farin's valiant companions. I'm Glorn, son of Groen, from the Lonely Mountain. And one of Bilbo's companions in the quest to slay the dragon Smaug. It's an honor to meet such a famous dwarf. I'm Eridan of the Dunedain. I heard about that business at Sarn Ford. And they say that three of you brought down an orc chieftain at Fornost. <laughs> I expect I'll be hearing of even greater deeds before long. It does my heart good to see a dwarf, an elf, and a man working together again. <laughs> Reminds me of the old days it does, when the three kindred fought alongside one another in the Battle of the Five Armies. Then you approve of Farron's alliance with Andrael and me. I will speak plainly. I may be less than fond of King Thranduil's wood elves for keeping me in their dungeons, but I've no grudge with any of Elrond's folk. Yet in the Battle of the Five Armies, it was Thranduil's elves who died alongside men and dwarves in battle. You're right, of course. I can be a stiff-necked old dwarf, but it's time to set aside grievances that were long ago repaid. When dwarves, men, and elves fought together at Erebor, not forget the great eagles. They have been a great help to us, just as they were to you and your companions. Well spoken. Thorin's quest and the Battle of Five Armies would have met disaster without the help of the eagles. You're fortunate to have gained the friendship of such noble creatures. Your life may well depend upon your choice of friends. 
whatever kindred they be. Sauron's attention will be focused largely on the south. Perhaps if we thwart his plans here, it will distract him. That could benefit Frodo and the Fellowship on their quest. That's my thoughts upon the matter, too. Be the stinging fly in the ointment, as it were. <laughs> Only this fly's sting will be deadly. And it's time to be about your business. Goodbye, and good luck to you. I thought it rare to find one dwarf so far from home. Yet here is another. If I may say, there's something about you that reminds me of my companion Farin. Gimli, son of Glowen, at your service. Your eyes serve you well, Ranger. And if I may say, your own fame has gone before you. You fought well at Fornost, and I hear much praise of your exploits. Most impressive, though of course you had Farin's help. <laughs> I must concede the usefulness of a dwarf in battle. He wields his weapon to good effect. As long as he stays clear of my knees. Useful? I dare say you'll find him more than useful. Why, he's a hero of the Battle of the Five Armies. Men, elves and dwarves against orcs and goblins. And many an orc has felt the caress of his axe. Farin said no word of other kin coming to join him. What brings you here to Emladris? Aye, it's a long march from the halls of Erebor. But grim news goes on swift feet. It was for Bilbo's sake we came, with a warning that the servants of Sauron wished to find him and his ring. Thrice a black rider came to the front gate of Erebor, demanding news of Bilbo, and threatens to return once more. Ere that should happen, King Dane sent my father, Glowen, to seek the advice of Elrond. You've heard the results of the council? I see you have. I have sworn to protect Frodo upon his quest. An oath I will fulfill, though all the orcs of Middle-earth stand in my way. Do you know Frodo well? I know only that he is Bilbo's adopted heir, and that he is chosen of his own free will to bear and destroy the ring. That's all I need to know. I'll protect him to my final breath, if need be. Erebor, the Lonely Mountain. I've heard tales of it. Were you there at the downfall of Smaug? Sadly, no. I was far to the west in the Blue Mountains where I was born, for my father deemed me too young to join him on Thorin's quest. But once the dragon was destroyed, I hurried with many of my kin to settle there. I've labored some seventy years to restore what was lost and helped build anew the city of Dale from the ruins of the Dragonfire. I've seen the bones of Smaug upon the lake bottom where he fell. Did you know that Bilbo exchanged riddles with the dragon? Now that's a tale he should tell you. We owe much to that fine old hobbit. You're bold to defy a Nazgul if it was indeed one of the nine who came to your door. Not one of the Nazgul, I think, but it was a fell servant all the same, who spoke in a voice like the hissing of snakes. What sort of man can serve the enemy willingly, even gladly, is beyond my understanding. More cruel than any orc, he struck me, full of venom and lies. Your words fit Agendauer well. His cruelty knows no bounds. Could it be so? Perhaps. It is enough that we will not be deceived by promises from Mordor ever again. The only way the Dark Lord gets his ring back this time is when it's tossed into the fires of Mount Doom. Elrond has asked us to scout the Edenwars. But what is it that worries you about the North? I like not what I've heard of this Agendar you drove from Fornost. He could yet cause grief untold. There are rumors of gatherings of orcs, goblins, and other deadly foes growing in strength. When the Dark Lord strikes, there will be more than one land that feels his wrath. I fear for the Shire and Rivendell. It would ease my heart to know that you'll look to the defense of the North for as long as you're needed. With help from Farron, of course. For my part, you have my word on it. And I have no doubt your trustworthy kinsman and Andriel will stand by my side. The sun shines and all is fair and peaceful here in Amadris. A far cry from the blood and dust of Fornost, is it not? You and your companions did very well there. Indeed, things might have gone badly for us had you not been there. You have earned some time to recover from the toils of battle and hard travel. And I believe you will find no place better for the restoration of body and spirit than this, our home. How was it you happened to be at Fornost? 
We often ride far afield hunting the orcs wherever we may find them. We came upon signs of a large band of goblins making their way from the orc hold of Mount Gram and followed their trail to Fornost, where we lost no time in attacking them. Greetings, my friends. I could scarce believe what I saw from above. But elf, dwarf, and man battling the enemy together, such things are not often seen. I knew it had to be you. Bellarom, it is a strange coincidence that we should meet again so soon. I did not think to find you here in the Etenmores. Nor did I. It does seem a strange coincidence, but a happy one nonetheless. How is it that you happen to be here in the Etenmores? I serve as a scout for my people. We are at war with the stone giant Bagrasar, who has attacked us without cause. A stone giant? I thought such creatures existed only in children's stories. No, the stone giants certainly do exist, but they are seldom seen beyond the highest mountain vales. I was never told they were hostile to our kind, however. They seldom are. Eagles and the stone giants have shared the mountain heights without conflict for many generations. But this giant, Bagrasar, is different. Without provocation, he ambushed some of our people, taking them unaware and striking them down with hurled boulders. Many of our errors he also destroyed, along with the defenseless fledglings who nested there. Gwai here summoned his strength to punish the giant, but he fled before us. We believe he has come here to the Eton Moors, where he is gathering an army of orcs and trolls. Bagrasar is a threat to all. The sooner he is destroyed, the safer we shall be. A threat to the eagles is a threat to us all. Let us join with you in the hunt for this giant. Your aid would be most welcome. Together we may be able to best him. Every hour he lives, his following grows greater. Let us press on! Ambush! It is finished! My people are avenged. And behold, here come your kin. My lord. It would appear that you have done our work for us, Belaram. Not I, Lord Gwaihir. Your thanks belong to these three. Andriel, Farin, and Aradan. It is they who rid us of Bagrasar. The same three that saved you at Fornos. Indeed. A remarkable chance that we should meet again. If chance it was, your fate seems strangely intertwined. But be that as it may, we are doubly grateful to you. First for saving the life of Belaram, and now for slaying the giant. Are there more of these stone giants threatening your people? There are other giants, certainly. But none that we would consider an enemy. Bagrasar was ever inclined to mischief, and was shunned by his own folk. Yet I never thought him capable of murder. He must have been persuaded to undertake these actions. We have discovered signs that Agandau has been here in the Etenmoors, that same servant of the Dark Lord that we encountered at Fornost. Then we need look no further for the source of Bagrasar's corruption. But how is it you chose to search these remote moors for Agandawa? Elrond half-elven suspected the enemy might be gathering here. It was he who sent us to investigate. I will not question the wisdom of Master Elrond. He sees much that is hidden from others. Yet I fear you have come too late to find Agandawa. We have searched the Etenmoors thoroughly in our hunt for Bagrasar. 
Yet we have seen no sign of this servant of the Dark Lord. If he was here, we can be reasonably certain he is here no longer. My people will work to disperse the enemy forces that remain in the moors. We will be on guard against the return of Agandaur. Then we should return to Elrond at Imladris. He will be anxious for news, and we have already been long away. I will arrange for a messenger. My lord, I owe my life to these three. And I too believe Agandaur to be a grave threat to the free peoples of the north. Eagles no less so than any other. If you would grant me leave, I wish to accompany them, and aid them in their quest. You ask a great deal, Belaram. I may have need for all my followers soon. Yet I perceive a great destiny awaits these three, and it seems you are now part of it. Very well. I will grant you permission to join with them for as long as you see fit. Unless Belaram plans to carry his friends like sheep in his talons, he will need help. If it pleases you, my lord, I will gladly accompany them as well. I too have a stake in this quest. Let me be the third. So be it. Three who cleave the air to match three who walk the earth. May fortune favor you all. Arminel, Baranthor, you shall be at Belaram's command. Obey his word until such time as you return to us. Now I must depart. Many forces are at work across Middle-earth and many events take shape. I must consider what part the Eagles will play in them. We are grateful for your aid, Lord Gwaihir, and your trust. Farewell. You return at last. We grew concerned for you. I fear you have missed your chance to say farewell to the members of the Fellowship, for they have departed. Clearly you found danger in the Etinmoors, yet you have returned safely, and in the company of three of the Great Eagles, no less. There is a story behind this, and I am eager to hear it. The Fellowship has begun their journey? How long have they been gone? They have only just departed. Did you discover something in the Etinmoors that makes you fear for their safety? We found trolls and orcs preparing for war, just as we feared. And they were led by a renegade stone giant. He was attacking the eagles. With the help of the eagle Belarom, we were able to make an end of the giant. That was well done, but this is troubling. Why would a stone giant act in this manner? They have never been hostile to free folk before. We took these tokens from some of our fallen... What can you tell us of Mount Gundabad? It is a great peak that stands far to the north, at the meeting point of the Misty Mountains and the Grey Mountains. Once, Gundabad was a delving of the dwarves, but it was abandoned long ago. It has since become a stronghold of the orcs. It would be hard-pressed to find a more dangerous location in all the north. Then orcs are gathering to Agandaur's banner from all across the north. Rivendell may in eliminating the threat of Agandaur. If the orcs of Mount Gundabad are serving Agandaur, maybe we can find him there. It may well be. From Mount Gundabad, the orcs have many times. Unseen. If Agandaur is raising an army to fight for his master in the north, it is certain he will have traveled to Gundabad. The evidence you have uncovered confirms this to be so. But we have no way of knowing if he is there still. Perhaps not. But we should not sit idle waiting for him to begin the war on his terms. At the very least, we might learn what the orcs are planning. To walk into such an orc-infested pit as Mount Gundabad would seem like folly. But you have proven your skill and daring many times over. And, too, you have the eagles to aid you. 
It may be that you will find a way to take the enemy by surprise. It is certain that were you to destroy Agendaur, you would cut the heart from Sauron's plan to make war in the north. But what of Frodo and his quest? Is there nothing more we can do to assist him? That die is cast. We must abide the consequences, for good or ill. There is nothing more we here can do but to look to our own defense. And the best way to do that is by ridding ourselves of Agendaur. We travel to Mount Gundabad. Your courage is commendable, but be certain you are well prepared. Mount Gundabad will not be forgiving of the unwary. Farewell, and may the stars shine upon your path. Hello, you are one of the Duna Dine, are you not? Please allow me to introduce myself. Bilbo Baggins at your service. Eredal, at yours. Always happy to meet one of the Guardians of the North. I've heard all about what you and your friends have been doing to keep us safe. You'll have to tell me all about it one of these days so I can write it all down properly. Write it down? Are you then a chronicler, Mr. Baggins? A chronicler? Oh, oh, no more of an enthusiastic scribbler, really. History is just one of my interests. Lately, I've been working on poetry, mostly. Say, maybe you could help me with that. I'm writing a poem for Aragorn, and I'm a bit stuck on a line or two. Is that so? Well, then, let me hear what you have. Uh, very well, very well. Uh, the verse that's giving me trouble runs like this. Ahem. <clears throat> the light from the west is rekindled. Forth from him Ladris it springs. Renewed is the hope that has dwindled. Hmm. The light from the west is rekindled. Forth from him Ladris it springs. Renewed is the hope that has dwindled. To challenge the Lord of the Rings. Hmm, hey now, that's not bad, no. Maybe I can work with that. You missed your calling, my friend. Perhaps you should put down your weapons and take up a pen. Nay, perhaps. But for now, we have more need of warriors than poets. Oh, I'm afraid you're right, but since these old hands are not much use with the sword, I'll just keep on with the pen. Though I'll need some help. Perhaps you could show this to the Lady Arwen. She has her people's gift with words, and this touches her deeply, after all. Take it to her. Ah, thanks very much. Uh, be sure to give her my compliments, won't you? I will indeed. Farewell now. It is kind of you to seek me out again, Eridan. My father is deeply concerned over the tidings you bring. While my thoughts stray often to those who travel south, our most immediate danger comes from the north. I have an errand I must not forget. Here is an unfinished poem from Bilbo. He asks for your opinion and advice, saying the subject is very close to your heart. Then it must be about Estelle. He is fond of writing verses in honor of his good friend, and therefore often comes to me for advice. You may leave it with me, Eridan. I will give it some thought and answer him myself. Watched hobbits from their borders, but seldom spoken with them. Is Bilbo typical of his kind? I had once thought Bilbo unique. But now that I have met Frodo, I say that elves know less of hobbits than we think. They have a strength within that is far greater than their stature. How many of us, thinking ourselves strong, could have borne the ring as long as Bilbo did, without being turned to evil? It sustained him, so that he is now very old amongst his kind. But it did not stain him. Nor has it lessened his love of poetry and song. Dear old Bilbo, I believe there is nothing he loves more, except a good meal. In that, he remains a true hobbit. Yet I fear there are few left in Imladris who have a heart for feasting and poetry. With each piece of news, our people grow more grim. There is strength here in Imladris, but the enemy has laid his plans well. Sauron's allies are also powerful, and when the stroke falls, it will fall not only upon those lands near to Mordor, the no Is there any news of Frodo? Is it not strange that the fate of the world should rest upon one who is so small? And yet the hopes of all who would stand against the enemy depend upon the success of his quest. And for this reason, it is best to say as little of it as possible. Those few of us who know of the ring must guard the secret closely and keep any hint of knowledge from reaching Sauron. 
There is wisdom in your words. There are too many unfriendly ears in the world, and we do not know where danger may be lurking. I must be on my way. Namarie. will hide us from the eyes of the enemy below. Belram, look! Above the mountain! Set us down! We can attempt to find a way into the mountain under cover of this storm! There is little chance of that, with those creatures keeping watch from above. Once we land you, my comrades and I will draw off the beasts. Someone was here before us. There was a fight here very recently. The bodies. They're dwarves. This one lives still. Well then, come on, you scum. Finish it. You... You're not orcs. Why are you here? What were you attempting? We seek a weapon. We must find it, use it, stop the orcs. Andriel, help him. Use your arts. No, no. Save it. The arrows, poison. No hope. But you, you, you can help. Help my friends. Your friends, where are they? Find them. Help them. Please. Save. Nordenbach. What is this weapon? Where can we find it? Dwarf weapon. In the stone. Nordry has key. Find them. Help them. Please. Save Nordenbach. Who or what is Nordenbach? He can't tell us anything more. He's gone. But there may be more like him within this fortress. Yes. They're searching for some sort of weapon. Come, we must try to find them. This is it! Quick line! Up you go! Exactly the same. What are you doing here? We've come to activate an ancient weapon. With luck, it'll kill a lot of orcs. What sort of weapon? You'll see. Once activated, it'll take some time to do its work. Aye, and it's sure to bring a lot more orcs down on us, too. No time for dilly-dallying. Go ahead and use it. We'll hold off the orcs.
mountain is coming down! Aye, a good deal of it anyway, just as we hoped. You knew this was going to happen? It's what we came here for. We had to strike this blow if our people are to survive. I am... I am heartily sorry for getting all of you killed as well. I don't think we need to worry about death just yet. Look! Darren's beard! Well, this is a day I'll not soon forget. I've seen a few things in my time, but I've not flown on an eagle's back till today. Well, now that it's a bit easier to talk, let me thank you properly for saving our lives and bid you welcome to Nordenbad, our home. Nordri's father, the Lord Gordon, will want to speak with you. Nordri's gone ahead to report on the Gundabad raid and to tell him about everything you did for us. We're grateful for the welcome, but in the rush of battle and our escape, I don't believe we actually caught your name. Oh, confound me for an old fool. Bruni, son of Bane, at your service and your families. A captain of the Nordenbad Guard and a servant of Lord Gorin. We would be pleased to speak with Lord Gorin. Just make your way past the door as you see yonder, and you'll find him within. The guards have been instructed to let you pass. Here, sire, are those I spoke of. Allow me to present a kinsman, far of Erebor, and also Andriel and Eridan, his companions. We succeeded in our task, and I live to tell of it, thanks only to their aid. You are most welcome here, kinsman, and no less so your companions, be they man, elf, or eagle. Welcome all to Nordenbad, last hollow the Longbeards in the Grey Mountains. You have returned to me, my son and my oldest friend, whom already I mourned as lost. For this, you will forever have my gratitude and the hospitality of these halls. Know that this is not something lightly given, for never before have we allowed any but our own folk to escape. And no eyes have gazed upon the hidden lake of Azanzaram, save those of our close kin. And for what you have done, I will gladly lay aside our ancient oath of secrecy. We are glad to have been of service. All free folk should stand together in these dark days. May I ask how it was you happened to be in so unlikely a place as Mount Gundabad? One does not go rightly into so foul a pit. We were seeking a servant of the enemy, a man known as Agandar. Agandar? We are familiar with that one. Curse his black heart. He appeared before our gates some weeks past, and called us to parley, in the name of Sauron the Great, so he said. A parley? What did he ask of you? He demanded that we yield ourselves up to the mercy of Sauron, as if there was any mercy in the Dark Lord. He lays claim to Nordenbad, telling us if we turn over our halls and riches without a fight, our lives will be spared will be free to seek a new home elsewhere. Of course, we would have nothing of that. When we defied him, he grew wrathful, threatening us with the fiery doom that overtook our ancestors. Fiery doom? What did he mean by that? I fear he may have allied himself with the dragon Orgast who dwells in these parts. With such a beast at his command. A dragon? I thought the world had seen the last of dragons after Bard the Bowman slew Smaug. Alas, no. There are dragons still to be found in these mountains, and yet more dwell on the wastes beyond. They may not be as great or wicked as was Smaug, but they are large and evil enough. Make no mistake about that. But could even Agandower command the allegiance of such a creature? Perhaps not on his own account, but if he speaks for the Dark Lord, even Orgast would think twice before offending him. Ah, dragons are wicked creatures, and their greed knows no bounds. Argandauer only has to name the right price. Then would it not be best to destroy this dragon before it can be used as a weapon? Well, huh. destroy Orgast? If only it were that simple. The attack on Gundabad would be a peaceful stroll around the lake in comparison. Hey. If it were so easy to slay dragons, there would be many more dwarves still dwelling in these mountains. Urgost has never taken notice of us before. We rather hoped it would stay that way. They say it does not pay to leave a live dragon out of your calculations if you live near one. And we cannot allow Agandar to gain such a powerful ally. Agreed. Where can we find Urgost? 
You do not lack for courage, I will grant you. Yet we know not where the dragon dwells. No dwarf has discovered his lair and lived to tell of it. Perhaps Radagast knows this secret, or can discover it. Seems there is little that happens in Wilderland that escapes his notice. Who is Radagast? Radagast the Brow. He is a wizard, a master of birds and beasts. He keeps to himself mostly, but he's a decent enough sort. As long as you mean no harm to the wild creatures he befriends. He dwells within the forest of Mirkwood, away to the south. Perhaps your companion Bellaram would know where to find him. For it is said that Radagast is a friend to the Lord of Eagles himself. Much as I'd like to avoid Mirkwood, seems like it'd be worth our time to speak to this wizard. Indeed. But before you set out, please accept a token of our gratitude. Seek out my steward, Galar. I have instructed him to open our vaults to you. I believe you may find something within that will be of service in the days ahead. Radagast is a good friend of yours? The Brown Wizard has been a close friend of the Eagles since he first came to Middle-earth and settled into the forest that is now called Mirkwood, even before it came to have that dark name. That was long before I was born, but I have visited with him many times in his home at Rosgabel when I would bring him news from afar. But I have not seen him since he abandoned Rosgabel. Why would he abandon his home? He was gone from his home before I could ask. But there has been a growing threat and darkness in the south of Mirkwood. I believe Rosgabel is no longer safe, even for a wizard. But fear not. I know Radagast's favored places in the north of Mirkwood. We will find him, or I will bring you to a place you are likely to find him at the very least. I worry about my people. We do not dine are so few now, and our families are scattered across the north. Perhaps I should go to their defense. And yet, what could you do for them? One man, alone. Were there a hundred Eridans, you could not withstand the power that is set against you. But together, we may strike a blow far greater than any army could achieve. You rangers are hardy folk. Trust them to survive, as they have for so long. We do what must be done to bring down Agandar. Only then will your homes and our areas be safe. spread his veil of lies no more. Yet I fear this was no chance meeting. If Wolfram was here, it could mean trouble for Radagast. You should press on and find him. We will continue the search on foot. Should we look for you here once we have found him? No, I must find my companions. They are probably worried about me. Together, we will keep watch from above. Radagast has many friends among the birds of Mirkwood. If you find him, he can send a message to us easily enough. What is this creature you've bested? It smells foul. Who can say? Some beast from an older world, maybe. Bred and twisted by the Dark Lord to serve his most trusted servants. We will find him, but what about you? Are you hurt? The beast did its damage, but not enough to keep me from the air. I will be fully recovered soon enough. We will continue the search on foot. 
Should we look for you here once we have found him? No, I must find my companions. They are probably worried about me. Together, we will keep watch from above. Radagast has many friends among the birds of Mirkwood. If you find him, he can send a message to us easily enough. I thank you for my life, friends. I had abandoned all hope before you appeared. I am Glohirin, an elf of the Woodland Realm. It is our custom to be wary of strangers, yet I have never been happier to see unfamiliar faces. Glad to be of service. I am Eridon, and with me are Farin and Andreal. Might I ask what brought you to this pass, Glohirin? I am one of King Thranduil's wardens. My companion Galron and I were tasked with scouting this portion of the wood. We found enemies gathering here, but for what purpose we could not tell. We thought to consult with Radagast the Brown who dwells nearby, but we found the danger grew greater as we approached his home. But what of you? How is it you three are here in Mirkwood? We too are searching for Radagast. I fear he has come to some harm. Elf, man, and dwarf seeking a wizard. There is a story here to be sure. But we have no time for tales now. Radagast is likely in grave danger, and so too my friend Galron. Where is your companion? Alas, I cannot say. We came upon a band of orcs, and while we battled them, spiders began to cast down their lines from the trees above. I was entangled, and the orcs bore me away. I can only hope that Galron escaped a similar fate. Orcs and spiders working together in this manner bodes ill for my people, and more so for Galron. I must find him. We will help you look for him. Your offer is appreciated, but we should not abandon Radagast. I will search for my friend while the three of you go after the wizard. Once I find Galron, we will attempt to join you. Very well. Good hunting, Glorhiren. Carefully. Let him down slowly now. He yet lives. Aye, and he's coming around. Ooh, oh. Radagast, are you well? Oh, what a thoroughly unpleasant experience. I shall have more pity for flies in the future. The spider's venom can be deadly. We should attend to you at once. No cause for concern. It happens I know a thing or two about venoms and poisons. 
Sinathra's poison could be deadly, but killing prey outright is not the way of such creatures. No, they much prefer to keep their meals alive for a time. <laughs> Just as a farmer might age a cheese to improve its flavor, really. I had heard Merkwood was home to many spiders, but I never expected anything like this. Are there more of her kind around? I certainly hope not. This was the Spider Queen, Sanathra. I've heard many fearful tales of her from my friends among the forest creatures, but I've never before had the misfortune of encountering her. I'm rather surprised to find her here. By all accounts, she kept her lair in the craggy mountains near Dol Guldur, far to the south. There was a powerful force here, and it is clear that you were their target. Why is the enemy after you? Ah, oh, the enemy never needs a reason to kill and destroy. But if I were to hazard a guess why they were after me in particular, I would say it is because of my talent for gathering and sending news quickly. That could mean they plan to attack our friends nearby. The Bjornings and my woodland kin are in danger. We must warn them. Oh, you needn't concern yourself with that. As I said, I have a talent for such things. I will make sure our friends are warned. It's the neighborly thing to do, after all. Can you tell us what happened? Sanathra snatched me. Took me unawares, I'm afraid. I really didn't expect to encounter anything of her sort in this corner of the wood. No, not at all. You see, I came here to get away from trouble. Darkness is spreading across Mirkwood. A darker than usual darkness, I mean. And it's coming from Dol Guldur in the south. Roscobel, my usual home, lies a little too close to Dol Guldur for comfort. So I came here. I have several such retreats. You can never be too prepared living in Mirkwood and all. But do I know you? No, Radagast, but you do know me. Ah, young Bellarum, it's a pleasure to see you. So you are a part of this little party too? <laughs> it's quite a mixed bag, really. I don't see elves, dwarves, and men rubbing elbows often, especially not in Mirkwood. <laughs> now add an eagle as well. This is turning out to be a rather extraordinary day, really, all things considered. I am just glad we came in time. My friends and I have a mission, and we came seeking your aid. We're looking for the dragon Urgost, who lives in the Grey Mountains. And we have no time for a lengthy search. We were told you might be able to help us find him. You wish to find a dragon? Oh dear, is that really wise? Wise or not, that is our mission. Do you know where Urgost can be found? Well, he's a dragon. So I would say, the Grey Mountains. I... yes, that is as we have already said. But do you know where in the Grey Mountains? I haven't the foggiest notion, really. What? So we've just been chasing the wind? Ah, now, not so fast. I may not know where Urgos dwells, but I just might be able to find out. It, mm, but I would need my staff for that, and I, I seem to have mislaid it somewhere. We found your staff. Here it is. I knew you would have need of it once we found you. Ah. Oh. Go on. <laughs> Crafty as a fox in your own fashion, too, I can tell. I'm grateful to you. Well then, let's see what we can find out, shall we? My friends might know a thing or two. Ah. 
I see, yes. Oh, yes, indeed. Very brave of you. Well done, my friend. And there you have it. Uh, perhaps you could explain further for those of us who do not speak the language of swallows. Oh, you don't? Quite a pity, really. They're rather pleasant little fellows. Always something nice to say. Well, what did this one have to say? Quite a bit, actually. Here, let me show you. Have you considered my offer? You bargain with what you do not possess, man of the self. I will have your price soon enough. Think carefully before you spurn this offer, dragon. As mighty as you are, you would do well not to offend my master. I did not say I refused. Only that you must first achieve my reward before you can give it. Ah, formality. I go now to take your price, but I will leave men behind to await your answer. Consider well, but not too long. My time and my thoughts are my own to spend. For now. Sinathra is no more. That was a feat worthy of heroes of the Elder Days. I am honored to have witnessed it. You were part of it as well. Thank you for your aid in the fight. I am pleased to have done my part. That is one less threat to my people. What of your friend Galron? Did you find him? Sadly, I was unable to save Galron. I discovered he fell in the same battle in which I was captured. I recovered his war gear from the orcs, and I wish you to have it. Galron would be pleased to know it was still being used to fight the enemy. I must hasten home to inform my lord of everything that I've learned here. I shall pause only long enough to consult with Radagast. Farewell, Aradan. We did not mean to disturb you, Mighty One. We are simple travelers making our way through these mountains. Do you think me a fool? No one travels in the Grey Mountains without good cause. Do not waste my time with pointless lies. We are hunting a servant of the Dark Lord, a man called Agandar. Are you What sort of deal? Agandar wishes me to join him in his conquest of the North. As a reward, he offers the realm of Nordenbard and all the wealth found there. This is not news to us. We know all about Agandar and his offer. What do you think brought us here? So, in spite of your brashness and bravado, I see you are not without a measure of resourcefulness. I do not know how you could have learned of Agandawa's offer, but it does not matter. Since you are so knowledgeable, perhaps you are also aware that I have no interest in Nordenbard. What is that dwarf infested bit to one such as I? No, I have my eyes set on a far greater prize. I want the ancient fortress of the Witch King himself. Gone, doom. 
Where is this place, Khan Doom? It sits atop the northernmost peaks of the Misty Mountains. Of old, it was the capital of the realm of Angmar, the mighty fortress of the Witch King himself. What do you want with such a place? The Grey Mountains are no longer a suitable home for one of my might and majesty. The oft plundered homes of the dwarves who once dwelt here hold neither the wealth nor the grandeur I desire. Not even that watery hole, Norden Bard. No, I would be lord of loftier halls and master of the hidden vaults of the Witch King as well. Or drove the Witch King from Khandoom long ago. If you want his fortress, what's to prevent you from taking it? Agandawar. He has taken control of Khandoom. From there, he plans his conquest of the north. If you desire Khandoom, why not take it from Agandar? In doing so, you would earn the thanks of all free folk. Be assured, I care nothing for your thanks. Yes, I want Khan Doom for my own, but I would be a fool to attack a servant of Sauron. As mighty as I am, I have no wish to make an enemy of the Dark Lord. You, on the other hand, have already done so. If you would see me remain neutral in this war, destroy Agandaur and turn over Khan Doom. We would be fools to trust the word of a dragon. What do you fear? That I will betray you to your death? That would be easy enough to achieve right now. Accept my offer, and you may yet face Agandaur. Choose swiftly. I grow tired of this debate. We will destroy Agandaur, but not at your command. We will be on our way. Very well. Not disappoint me, Ranger. And if you are truly concerned with the fate of Nordenbard, you might wish to return. Agandaur is moving against it even as we speak. They'll need our help. Let's go! Oh, yes. By all means, hurry. <laughs> I wondered indeed what transpired within that cave. But if our friends are in danger, then questions must wait. I will call Armanel and Baranthor, and we will depart at once. They're massing for another attack. I... I don't think we can hold off another one. No, nor do I. Have I gone mad or... No, look! It's them by thunder. Our eagle riding things. They've come back. Do you see them? They... Glad I am to see you, but it may already be too late. I've only a handful left who can still fight. Then fall back to the upper chambers. Give us what support you can from there, and we will see what we can do against their siege machines. What? I. Your place is with your people, Nordry. Go. I. Luck to you all. Fall back! Back to the upper galleries! Fall back! Against the gate. Come, we will drive them back. 
Berenthor, to the gate! Constant care if he is to recover. He'll have that. The best that we could give, I promise you. I'll take charge here. Go to my father and tell him what's happened. He'll send dwarves to help with Bellarab. Goring yet lives? That's some good news at least. He was wounded in the fighting, but he's still on his feet. Hurry inside now and speak to him. Once again, we have Nordenbad are in your debt. Without your aid, we would not have held them. The enemy is defeated, but at very great cost. I fear you have paid a terrible price to save your home. Aye. So many good dwarves lost. I do not think we will fight again in this war, unless in a final stand upon the shores and bridges of Azanzaram itself. We can only hope that Agendaur now believes the price of taking Nordenbad is too high. Our friend Belaram lies gravely injured. We must help him. I have already ordered my people to bear him into the hall. He will have the best care we can give, for it is certain we owe him our lives. But what of Urgast? You set out to deal with the dragon. Did you find him? Yes, but Agandar found him first. He promised the dragon Nordenbard. We offered him Agandar's stronghold instead, Karn Doom. Karn Doom? The ancient fortress of the Witch King of Angmar? Yes. We should have known Agandar would reoccupy that accursed place. If Orgos desires that black pit, he is welcome to it. Was he here? Did Agandar command the assault? It would seem he did not consider Nordenbad worthy of his personal attention. We saw no sign of his presence during the battle. He must be at Khan Doom. We will seek for him there. Such a trek will be long and difficult, and the loss of the eagles means you will need to go on foot. So be it then. For the sake of all free folk, Agendauer must die. I can spare no warriors to send with you. The strength of Nordenbad is all but spent. Yet it would please me if you would take these. They are heirlooms of my house. The greatest works of my people passed down through long generations. Parting with them would be hard, but your fight is our fight, and so I give them freely. Choose what you will, and may it help avenge the fallen. Bellaram, can you hear me, my friend? Aradan, I am within walls of stone, and hear no sounds of battle. The Nordenbad was saved. I, the enemy, had enough, and has fled away. How long have I been here like this? But a short while. Do not attempt to rise. You must save your strength. Where are Berenthor and Arminel? Friends were among those who fell in battle. They died valiantly, and their sacrifice will not be forgotten by the folk of Nordenbad, nor by any of us. Your words are kind, and I thank you for them. But my friends are dead nonetheless. What is more, they died under my command. It is a heavy burden to bear. But what of Agandar? Was he too slain in battle, or does he yet live? Agandar did not lead the assault. He is likely still at Kandu. Then we must seek for him there. Arminel and Barenthor must be avenged. You must do nothing but rest. It will take time for your wounds to heal. No. I would be there at the end. I must avenge my kin. <laughs> You must leave that to us now, Belarab. We need to press on before Agandara escapes us yet again. Yes. 
It is clear I cannot accompany you now. And if you delay, others may die. I will not be responsible for that. Go with my blessing upon you, friends. The folk of Nordenbad have pledged to care for you as one of their own. Rest now, and recover your full strength. Farewell. Take my hand. You needn't be doing me any favors. The mountain I can't climb hasn't been built. Well, we won't be going back that way, I'm thinking. You were correct, Aragon. There are no guards watching us. Small wonder. We cannot count on it remaining unwatched for long. Come, let us find a way into this fortress. who hid behind the elves at Fornost. You? You are the ones who have followed in my wake, upsetting my plans. Yes, and we have thwarted you at every turn. All you have done is raise my ire. Because of your insolence, my conquest of the North shall be all the more cruel. Such threats only strengthen our resolve, monster. Come down and face us, Agadar! You have much to answer Witless for! Witless fools. 
I learned at the hand of the Dark Lord himself. I am Sauron's greatest weapon in the north. You rush only to your death. I need your strength! I... No! Could you know that? It is true. I can feel it. Like a great weight has been lifted from my heart. I feel it too. He's done it. Frodo's really done it. The ring has been destroyed. Be that as it may, you must still honor your oath to me. Gondun is mine. We are true to our word, Dragon. And you are welcome to it. Just see you mind your manners, old worm. And we'll have no quarrel. <sighs> it is a long way home from here, for each of us. Let us make for Emlodris. You will find no better place to rest and recover. You have but to say the word, and we will press on. What say you, Farron? Should we go to Rivendell? A little rest sounds good.